Hello guys, I'm Superon. Welcome back to the G Unit and welcome to episode 14 of my GDS Zero build. In the last few episodes, we've been looking at all the mechanicals and engine work. In this episode, we're going to be looking at the brains behind it all because we need to build a engine wiring harness for this Mega Squirt V3 ECU. So let's have a look at some of the bits I've been collecting up. So this is the part of the project that I've been looking forward to the most because it makes me a bit of an oddball, but I absolutely love vehicle wiring. Whether it's custom stuff, making full looms, repairing looms, adding accessories, or just completely hiding stuff and making it invisible in an engine bay. I absolutely love it. Way back when I had the Astra in mid 2000s, I was hiding and flushing wiring looms before it was really a thing. So now it's really come along, especially in the VW world, I've done a lot of engine bays and I've been lucky enough at AutoShack to be part of some awesome projects, making custom looms, whether it's for performance, for Emerald ECUs, or just hiding everything and making it flush. So let's just have a quick look at a few that I've completed before. So like I said, I've been really lucky to be building all these wiring looms at AutoShack, fully kitted out, air conditioned workshop, but now we're down at the G unit, so I had to stock up. So I got in touch with Vehicle Wiring Products and they sorted me out with a full batch of wiring loom reels, all different colours, it just makes it so much easier to build the loom and fault finding in the future and it just makes a lot tidier job. So I've gone for thin wall wire, which is the more, wad, more modern type of wiring loom. As you can see, the insulation is very thin. And this is what it's like on all modern vehicles. On older vehicles, they used to have really thick insulation around each wire. But as vehicles got more and more complex, they needed um, to try and thin down the wiring because look, wiring looms were getting so big and heavy, they needed to do something about it. So most modern vehicles have this thin wall, which is the same size wire in the middle. It's just the insulation is a lot thinner which when you've got a complex loom, it just makes a lot more compact, tidy loom. Uh, a problem that does come from this, a lot of modern cars now suffer from wiring problems, like in door shuts and boot shuts, something that opens and closes a lot, you get a lot of fatigue. And because there's no um, structure around the wire anymore, they tend to break a lot. So that's why in modern cars, there's often a lot of wiring faults and wiring breakdowns where you didn't get it in older cars. But if you used the older wiring system, on newer cars, you'd have wiring looms the size of drain pipes. So for me, it doesn't matter that much because we're going to be protecting it, sleeving the whole loom outside. So it's not going to be rubbed through and it's not going to cause any problems. So I need to make a little rack for these. I've got all the colors that I should need for this setup. Um, I've got some conduit to go through the really wearing areas where things might rub through, but for most of it, I use this braided sheath. I've got all different sizes here, for whether we're on full loom or just single looms. Um, I've got heat shrink as well uh, in different colors. And I've got some clear as well for the labels. I've got these nifty little clips that you can screw on to places and then pass cable ties around them. So I'll be using these. I've got a whole bag of them. So they can be used for the fuel lines, looms, everything. Um, and as I'm making the engine loom from scratch, I've got all the plugs in kit form so I can make it so there'll be no joins, it can be a nice one piece. Uh, the Mega Squirt prefers the Ford 
VTEC coil, so I've got one of them, and again, the plug as well. And the Mega Squirt comes with a, a really short ply lead. When I'm doing the emerald ones, which is what we normally do at Auto Shack, they come with a full long lead, so you get the plug and then two or three meters of wire, so you can take it all the way from the ECU plug right to the injectors in one piece. So we are going to have a join here. That's just how the Mega Squirt system is. Uh, but that will still be fine. I've got these cool little relay blocks. So they hold relays and three fuses. So I'll have one relay for the main power to the Mega Square and one for the fuel pump relay. And then all the terminals and everything to make them connect together. I've got some of my tools here. I've got the label maker because I like to label each one because it just makes it easier for assembly. I've got my crimps, soldering and a few other bits. I also picked up these Savage Motorsport switches. On the Sierra column, there is already switches for um, horn and hazards, but on the Tiger loom, it's actually wired up for a separate hazard switch and a separate horn switch. So on the Tigers, they have the old fashioned mini style rocker switches. And I have always liked these Savage Motorsport switches, but they're horrendously expensive. They're over 30 pounds each. But I was a bit lucky. I found on one of the kit car for sale on the Facebook pages, Someone had finished their project and they were selling these for £5 each, including delivery. So another one of Superon's amazing bargains. So it's 15 quid delivered for all three. So they'll be going on the dash and they'll look a lot better. So let's see what the Mega Squirt needs to run. It's a very simplified system of factory looms and there's not much it really needs. It needs a crank sensor, coolant temperature sender, throttle position sensor, air temperature, and that's about all it does need to run. So it's very simplified. So we've got our Vauxhall standard crank sensor that's going to fit into the block and run off the um, standard crank pickup, which is cool. Um, we've got the standard Vauxhall Bosch coolant temperature sender. And we've got the standard TPS sensor here. It's actually not going to fit the throttle bodies. So I'm going to have to get a little Gen V1. As you can see, the, the holes are too wide. So I'll get a little Gen V1 for that. I've got some injectors to try in. I've found these ones. These were just some old red top ones. I think I'll probably have to get bigger ones for this setup. I don't know if you can wind the fuel pressure up on cream ones and it'll be okay. Uh, but I might have to get some VXR ones for this. Not sure. Uh, for the ignition side, on the standard red top and on my C20 let, we used to have the distributor. But for the Mega Squirt, it can run a distributor but it just seems more sense to get rid of some moving parts and run a coil pack. The Mega Squirt also runs the idle control valve, but I won't be running on this because we've got throttle bodies and it has an internal map sensor. So it just needs the vacuum hooked up to the ECU itself. So there's not really a lot that I need to connect up. It's uh, quite a simple system. And that is another reason when we're doing show cars, we do go for the aftermarket management because it just cuts down all the wires, gets rid of all the emissions and everything like that. So this is the generic mega squirt wiring diagram that they give you. So what I've done is tailored it to myself and worked out what we need. These are the little relay boxes and the little fuse boxes that um, need connecting up. We've got also with this ECU, We've got launch control and full throttle gear changes. So I'll have to hook up a clutch switch in the car. But mostly, these ones are all the bits that go into the engine. This is the section that's going to the fuse box. We've got the ECU at the top. And then this is your ignition lives, taco outputs, and things that are going to join into the car loom. So I think what we've got to do is where you start from is your ECU. So we'll start assembling the engine up and working out where we're going to put things. So let's do that. Oh yeah, I forgot we took the head off in the last episode just for a picture to show what the combustion chamber was like. So let's reassemble the mock-up engine.
And so there's the lock-up motor all back together. We've got the throttle bodies on. If you remember from earlier on, we are going to have to cut the inlet manifold and sweep these up more in the style of direct head throttle bodies, just so they clear the chassis. But we've got the injectors in, so they'll be able to be put into length. And we have got the distributor on, which is what traditionally the C20XE and the C20 let does run with the spark plugs under the Vauxhall sign there. So we're running the Ford coil pack. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm just going to bolt it onto the bulkhead there. That'll make nice, easy running for the HT leads to go in. So that's that one solved. We've got the throttle position sensor. Obviously that doesn't bolt on at the minute. So it looks like it can go either end on the Gembies. So I'll decide which one to wire that into. We've got the starter on this side as well, but that's taken care of in the engine loom. Moving round. Um, we've got the alternator on this side and that's taken care of in the engine loom. But behind that, is the crank sensor there. And also we've got our water temperature, one for the ECU, which will go to the mega squirt, and the other is for the dash, which will go to the aerial atom dash. And we've got the spaghetti manifold back on. Um, but now I think that'll fit in there nicely. Things like caterums and other kit cars usually have their ECU bolted onto the scuttle there. And although the mega squirt is, it's all waterproof, and it's okay to be outside. I think I will just put it under the dash just so it's out of the elements. I'll make a little tray up to sit it under there and also that'll be easy to plug in and also I can see the lights if there's any faults they'll show up on there. And a few other components I've just got to bear in mind when I'm making the engine loom. We've got the aerial atom clocks and shift light steering wheel. I've also got a oil pressure gauge as well which will go in. And this is the original Tiger loom, the full car loom that I'm going to be using that we went through in a previous episode. And here you can see the little fuse box relay holder, like what I'm going to build with the Mega Squirt loom. And as you can see, you just make it to however you want, assemble it to what you need, and then they do all clip together as well. So I can have all, all of them bolted on next to the ECU and label them all up and it'll make a very simple install. Tiger loom back in, kind of got it in its places. Now we know where a few more bits are. It's the Tiger E1 full wiring loom, so I'll put it where the headlights go. We've got the horn at the front. We've got the starter motor lined up there. Right round to the front, we've got our fan rad switch and radiator fan wires. Horn, left headlight. We've got alternator wiring. And it comes up into the cockpit through this grommet, which there's also a hole in the GBS uh, scuttle. I think what I will do, I'll move that back slightly because my scuttle is a bit further back. So I'll probably have it coming through the panel above the gearbox there. Um, but we've got the fuse box. So we've got all the wires that need to go to the switches. Then these were all the old instrument wires, but they'll all be going to the aerial atom dash. But it all fits in there really nicely. Runs down the car, got the handbrake switch there. Moving around to the rear, we've got the fuel level sender, got lights this side, lights that side, and we've got fuel pump as well, which will sit in there. So everything is lined up quite nicely. I will be trimming this just a bit to size once it's all in. But the route runs round. Um, I was going to run it down this side, but there's not really a clear run with the exhaust because it goes up and over every pipe. I think it'll be better to run it around that side. And there's plenty of loom there. So that'll clip on there nicely. 
and still come up into the cabin completely sealed away from the engine bay. So I think that's going to work quite well. So now let's look at the engine loom. So after a lot of thinking, I think I'm going to put the ECU here. I found the GBS panel that sits on top of the tunnel there. It looks like it hasn't been used yet. It's still got the protective film on. So that's where the ECU is going to sit. And I uh, found a nice little spot for the fuse box there. The bottom two are for the Tiger loom. That's all the fuses for the lights and the pumps and everything else. And the two relays, one is a flashy unit and the other is a switch relay for the hazard. And the top two empty ones are going to be for the mega squirt management. So they'll all connect inside the cabin. So that'll all keep it nice and tidy. So none of that will be in the engine bay. And I've got the lambda sensor down here as well. And I think what I'll probably do is put it on the side coming into there, because then that can go straight into the cabin as well and stay inside. That'll come out the side of the side panel. So that'll all keep it nice and tidy inside the cabin. And then the loom will come down into the tunnel. I'll make a nice little grommet to go into there. And that'll go round to the engine bay the other side. I've got the coil pack kind of sitting in the right place. I took the distributor back off. I'm going to get some different ends for the HT leads because the Ford ones look a bit smaller than the Vauxhall. They don't fit very nicely, but I think that's going to sit on there perfectly. And then the loom will come out of the tunnel under there to the injectors and around the front to all the other sensors it needs. So I think that sounds like a game plan. There we are, all bolted on. This is the biggest hurdle in wiring. It's the very first point you need to be at. You need a starting point to run all your wires to, to run everything from. So now the ECU is all bolted down, fuse box is fixed on. So we've got a starting point where we can run all our wires. As much as it does pain me that the logo is now upside down, this makes more sense to put it this way. You can get easier access to the plug. It's all going to be a bit tight on that side. So you're not going to see it, but it will annoy me. I know it's there. I might have to get a new MTEC sticker. It's taken a lot of thinking to get the finalized point here, but from now on, it's just a case of joining it up to all the other plugs around the engine. So a lot of wiring ahead. And with the scuttle back on, you can't even see it. It's tucked right under. Stays in the fuse boxes. Tucked away nicely. So I think that's a good position there. Just as I'm looking at the wiring diagrams, I don't know if anyone is familiar with the Mega Squirt, but on their diagram, there's no output for a taco. There's some spare ones in the plug itself unused but I can't really find any information about which pin to wire the taco up to so I've got all mine everything going to everything and I've labeled all the pins what they all do except for the taco so if anyone's used mega squirt before and a bit more familiar with the insides just let me know which pin you need to wire the taco to and so unfortunately, we are out of time once again this week. It may look like we've taken a step backwards. It's looking a little bit less complete, but we've established a huge hurdle this week. The main part of doing vehicle wiring, you need that starting point. You need to start to point at, to go from, and go all the way back around the car from that point. And we've got that this week. We've got where the ECU is going to sit. We've got where the fuse box is going to sit. So from now on, we can make the looms the exact lengths to where they need to go. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode and keep on subscribing. We keep getting a big following with this project, so it seems like you like what I'm doing. So make sure you give it that thumbs up. But until next time, make sure you have fun.